What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and it has been a crazy summer of travel and in today's video I just wanted to sit down and kind of recap all of it and talk about all of the crazy experience that we got to be a part of in the tech industry. If you guys have been following the channel, you guys have seen all of these travel films that have all ranged throughout the tech industry with smartphone releases to Formula One, to factory visits in Germany, being able to drive concept cars, but also just like the most incredible and odd experiences that we're able to come across. And I feel like there hasn't really been any time to sit down and take it all in. So a video like this just lets me talk about our experiences, just how grateful I am to be able to travel for work. But at the same time, some of the tips and tricks that I've learned so far with almost 100 flights this year. Because if you guys remember back in 2019, there was already a ton of work travel, but I feel like I didn't really do it properly. There was a lot of things that I've learned over the years and I feel like this year we were really able to optimize for a better travel experience, but also being able to stay as efficient and high energy as possible to be able to come back home and still film nearly 100 videos in the tech industry per year. In this video, I'm also gonna be talking about all the brands that we work with on this trip and kind of the setup that led to these opportunities. But I do also have a YouTube course called Creator Cashflow, where I specifically talk about the art of the YouTube business. For anyone who is making a YouTube channel or wants to go full time if you're already a content creator and want to figure out ways to be able to turn it into something that is monetizable as well as a business. I'm going to drop a link down below as there's over eight hours of video course content that is interactive with quizzes for each chapter and over 150 pages of PDF material. I wanna give a huge thanks to MasterCard for sponsoring this video because throughout the travels, of course, we have to have a reliable credit card, but also along with the perks and the experiences that you can redeem, these all factor into the card that we choose to use beyond the fact that it is the most universal card. So I feel like this whole travel story dates all the way back to 2019 when I dropped out of university in late 2018 and had literally said yes to every single campaign and like event that I was invited to. When the pandemic came by, I didn't really fly for about two years. And to be honest, it was relatively refreshing to be able to set up the business back home. We purchased an office space. I purchased a new primary property. And throughout these renovation series, I found that being home gave me a lot of time to be able to set those things up while also working working on videos that we really want to work on over the years. After all the pandemic restrictions lifted, I really didn't think we'd be traveling much in 2022, to be honest, but I was definitely wrong. It started with a trip to Barcelona for Mobile World Congress, followed by a trip to Vietnam with VinFast, and then as the summer rolled by and we got to June, this is where it gets really crazy. It began with a trip to Apple at the start of June for WWDC. And this is actually the first time that I'd ever been invited to an Apple event. And after 10 years of covering Apple and being a huge Apple fanboy, obviously, being invited to an event at the Apple Spaceship Campus was a huge honor and something that I really look forward to for so many years now, but was never sure if it was going to happen. We went there, we covered the event, and I even had a chance to meet Tim Cook, which is really cool because I actually had the opportunity to interview Craig Federighi the year prior. So being able to just see what it's like in Silicon Valley for the first time was awesome, but right after we finished off that trip, it was time to head off for Formula One. So right after Apple, we were invited to the Canadian Grand Prix, and this is with Scuderia, Ferrari, and Shell. And it was really cool to be able to check out the paddock, meet the drivers for the first time, and that full experience of a whole race weekend, and just being able to enjoy all the different team parties, events, meeting up with people that you might know in the industry, such as Maddie, Peter, and Alan, was really cool. And we also made a video of that. But so the first race that I actually went to this year was in Miami in May, and I fully paid for that trip myself. It was extremely expensive, all said and done. And we filmed a whole video highlighting the experience of the Formula One race weekend in Miami. And that video definitely set the tone for our Formula One series moving forward. And from a business standpoint, it is just an example of, even though we have been in the video industry and in the YouTube space for over 10 years, we wanted to enter a new industry such as Formula One. And as a result of that, had to out of pocket, 
pay for a trip to Formula One, and actually film a video to show what we were capable of to then pitch to brands. Literally the week after Formula One in Montreal, it was time to fly off to London, England for Wimbledon. This is another event that I really wanted to attend for many years, and one of our channel sponsors, Oppo, is actually a title sponsor at the French Open as well as Wimbledon. And so we figured that it would be a really good opportunity to bridge that partnership together and work on a video that allowed us to highlight the camera capabilities on the smartphone in a form that was very entertaining because we're also there to attend Wimbledon and we were able to enjoy all the traditional aspects of England as well as Wimbledon itself. What I've really found that was cool about the tech industry over the years is that you can always tie together elements of technology with events, sports, and lifestyle. And if you get creative with it as a creator, you're able to put together opportunities that just seem to make a lot of sense. And the biggest thing that I've learned from all this, whether it was Formula One or attending different events that I was like kind of eyeing on the calendar, was just to simply ask. Find the right people on LinkedIn, send them a message, explain the value that you're able to provide, and you never know what could happen. So I feel like it's time to stop and take a break and talk about one of the most important travel hacks that I can give, and that is having the right credit card. Being loyal to a credit card system can not only allow you to rack up points to get more free travel, but also redeem amazing experiences. And MasterCard is here to make your trip experience unforgettable, whether you're traveling solo, as a couple, or as a business. By being a MasterCard member, it allows you to unlock exclusive deals and enjoy premium benefits. But most importantly, here are some of the things that a MasterCard gives you when it comes to travel benefits. One of the most important ones is airport lounges. MasterCard gets you into over a thousand airport lounges in a hundred countries with the lounge key. And what's great about this is that you're able to go there, enjoy yourself, grab some food, and just hide away from all the crazy crowds at airports nowadays as the travel surge has definitely come back in full force. I typically do book some long layovers between some connections just to ensure I don't miss any connecting flights at all. So being able to sit down and work in between is the best way that we stay efficient, but also keep up with our upload schedule on the road. Another very important thing though is Wi-Fi. It gives you Boingo Wi-Fi access to stay connected to people and things that matter most through premium quality access at over 1 million hotspots worldwide at no added cost. Especially with how expensive roaming can be, if you don't have a plan for that, then you can go ahead and connect to one of the million Wi-Fi hotspots around the world that is available in public. On quite a few trips, we also rented a car, and with MasterCard, it also allows you to have car rental collision damage waiver insurance. There's also stuff like travel accident and emergency medical insurance, trip cancellation insurance, as well as baggage delay insurance that reimburses you for your lost baggage and contents when you need them. This also ties to lost and damaged luggage, which reimburses you for the actual cost of repairing or replacing. And there's also coverage for hotel, burglary, and robbery insurance. So these are some of the MasterCard benefits, but what I found most important is that MasterCard is the most universally accepted card. I obviously have quite a few credit cards, all of them with their own use cases, but notice, especially when traveling internationally, MasterCard has been the only one that has consistently worked in every single country, and that is extremely important. So these travel benefits are huge when it comes to picking a credit card, because that is probably where I would benefit the most when it comes to the different offerings from different credit card companies out there. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check it out for yourself, I'm gonna drop a link to MasterCard down below, and a huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video. As soon as we got back from England, I thought I had a couple weeks to chill out, work on some videos, but then we get a message from Mercedes asking us if we'd like to fly out to Germany for two days to drive the Vision EQXX. This is a one-of-one one concept car that Mercedes had put together as a project over the last year and a half, and it set the world record for range on a single charge, which was over 1,200 kilometers. This car just looks absolutely crazy, and I had seen videos of it online at the Monaco Grand Prix, and I sort of was like joking around in the office that it would be really cool if we ever got to check out a concept car, let alone being able to drive it. And up until then, Mercedes hadn't let anybody drive that car, and so when we were invited to Germany, I obviously had to say yes. I feel like this is definitely an example of just stepping up and taking an opportunity at the last second that ended up being a great experience because it ended up kickstarting a bigger relation with Mercedes 
and we ended up getting to go back a few months later. So that was like the June and July schedule, but moving into the first week of August, it was time to head to New York City. This was probably the most visited destination back in 2019 to the point that I was literally sick of it. I'd gone there for one day on nine separate trips and never really got to enjoy New York and what it has to offer, but I was excited to be able to spend five days there where we filmed three different videos and also attended an event with OnePlus, who always likes to throw a big event in New York for their smartphone releases. Having been able to check out all the different areas of New York and meet up with some friends made it such an amazing trip and I look forward to hopefully going back before before the end of this year to work on a real estate video. But it was obviously a very hectic week because as soon as we were done the event, it was time to pick up the iPhones and we ended up bringing that over to Iceland to film a video captured on the iPhone 14 Pro before it was released to the public. Having this opportunity for the first time was really cool because it allows us to go to places like this and film a crazy video without feeling any time pressure until the embargo lifts the week after. And while we were there, we were able to check out some of the major landmarks in just a couple days, but obviously Iceland is a huge place and it's really hard to be able to visit every single area without staying there for at least a week or two. In between going to the Google and the Apple event, about a week and a half between, I I actually went to Paris for 24 hours. Oppo was having an event for their brand new Reno 8 Pro smartphone, so we were invited out to Paris to attend the event and also filmed another video while we were there, all within 24 hours. It was literally one of those trips where we flew five hours plus eight hours, landed at eight in the morning, attended the event at 1 p.m. There's also a rooftop party at 7 p.m., went to the dinners and all that, and then the next morning woke up at four to five a.m. in time for sunrise, which was absolutely worth it, by the way. We got some of our best footage around there before grabbing a quick breakfast and heading back to the airport for a 10 a.m. flight. After we got back from Iceland, we had a few weeks to just film the videos we needed to, the coverage, the campaigns, and a ton of deadlines, and we were actually able to upload a record number of times within that month before we were heading up on the longest and also craziest itinerary in a two week span. It started out with a trip to Italy. This one was with Four Seasons, and I have been wanting to go back to Italy for so many years now. I feel like over the years, Italy just pops up on everybody's TikTok and real feed, and so I wanted to either visit the Dolomites, Amalfi Coast, and all these places. Lake Como is another one that I also have never been to, but we were invited by Four Seasons to go to Florence for their inaugural Beyond My Four Seasons experience, which is like a curated drive through the Tuscan Hills in Ferraris, and when I heard like great food, Ferraris, and a five-star hotel. It just sounds like the perfect trip. And so we went on that trip and it was a video that we had so much fun making and it's actually gonna be coming out pretty soon if you guys haven't already seen it. That week, Four Seasons was actually also gonna have an event in Monaco announcing their yacht that was going to set sail in 2025. But unfortunately, we couldn't make it because we had to fly right back to Vancouver, stay there for one night, and then 12 hours later, fly off to Singapore with Singapore Airlines for Formula One. This was just another one of these trips that just sounded so perfect because as someone who loves flying, especially long haul flights, Singapore Airlines has constantly been ranked one of the top airlines in the world when it comes to its experience, but also number one in service for 2022. On the way there, I felt like I stayed up for most of it because I was trying to experience what they had to offer when it comes to food and drinks. And it was honestly just such a breeze. And as soon as we landed in the morning in Singapore, we were ready to go straight to the track. Singapore is another place that has been so high on my list because I just heard it is so surreal from an architectural, technological, but also just the way the country is set up. It is so clean and so civilized. It's also a very safe place. And so we had the chance to watch the Formula One night race, which is always a highlight on the calendar, but also spend a few days enjoying all of the different sites, landmarks, and also the amazing food that Asia has to offer. I actually want to go back before the end of this year because there's a 24 hour A380 first class flight that we can do out of New York, which I think would make a really good day in life vlog. About a week after landing back from Singapore, we were back on a plane to Europe for Paris and Germany. It was for Paris Auto Week with Mercedes where they showed off a new model, but also got to check out the EQG that was sitting in the parking lot as well as the EQXX that I had driven a few months prior. The coolest part of the trip though was actually heading to Stuttgart, Germany because we were actually given an exclusive tour of the headquarters in Stuttgart to be able to check out their original wind tunnel as part of their celebration of their historic cars. 
Within that wind tunnel, they had their original Formula One car that was the birth of the Silver Arrow's name. And it was actually the first time that they put it in their original wind tunnel. But it was also really cool to be able to visit the headquarter itself after developing that relation with Mercedes over the last few months. This whole crazy summer schedule wraps up with a trip to Austin, Texas, which was a day after flying back from Germany. And that was for the Austin Grand Prix with the Mercedes Formula One team, as well as Eight Sleep. This was one that honestly, I wasn't really sure if I was gonna go. It was just so much travel, but it was a really fun race day experience because we landed at 5 a.m. the day of the race, went to the race itself and then flew out the morning after and being able to have the paddock access, see Lewis Hamilton speak, walk along the pit lane and the garage brought together a lot of great memories from the Montreal Grand Prix, but in kind of a different format. Every single race is just so unique in their own ways. So as we look to the end of the year, where do we still have left to go? And the hypothetical schedule right now for November is a trip to Mountain View to film with Sony, Brazil for Formula One, Maui for the Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit, Toronto, New York. We tried to get into Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and maybe go to the Qatar World Cup, but I also really wanna make a stop in Japan as well as the Dolmites. And who knows, I don't know, like Turkey is also somewhere on the list. And I just don't really know whether to do these trips this year or next year. As you can probably tell, it has been a crazy year of travel overall. And I've gone on and on for so long now, and I pretty much like forgot about most of these trips, to be honest, because they were just so consecutive. But what are some of the tips that I have for travel? The first one that I have is that if you are like a Canadian citizen or if you're American, sign up for the different programs that allow you to get through airport security quickly. TSA PreCheck, Clear or Nexus are all very important ones. And especially if you have a connecting flight, it's important to be able to just save time. On top of that, I would say the biggest one is to fly with the same airline. I just cannot stress that enough that even though I flew enough in 2019 to be able to have the highest tier of loyalty with one airline, I didn't exactly do that properly. And so the one that I'm with is Air Canada, obviously, and the Star Alliance. And so I always try to ensure that all of my flights are with the same airline. And as a result, I can either get discounts, cancellation policies, but most importantly, upgrade to business class because at this amount of flying, I pretty much do need to have lay flat business class in every single international trip to be able to do them this consecutively and also this constantly. So being part of a loyalty program allows you to get a lot of those free upgrades because nowadays there's no such thing as like an automatic upgrade. You have to earn it and it's based on how much you fly with that airline. Of course, the credit card is another. Being able to get into certain lounges without having the right ticket for it was really handy back in 2019 especially. As a result of having the right credit card, I was able to get into the Delta Lounge or the Sky Team Lounge. But I think those are like the main tips, but also take a look at what you pack on a given trip, look at what you use and what you don't use and try to narrow that down as much as possible because that will definitely reduce the amount of anxiety that you have when it comes to packing for travel. I try to have like a grab and go bag now where if we have to go somewhere, I can pack within 10 minutes, grab a few things here and there and have that system down. And especially when it comes to the tech side of things, having the right plug adapters, different types of cables, including like a fast USB-C charger, as well as a USB-A to plug into planes is all very important, but also a good pair of headphones and a 10,000 mil amp hour battery pack. That is just like my very basic tips. And a few years ago, I would have had a ton of stuff in my travel bag, but nowadays it is slimmed down significantly. And I also bring like a vitamin C concentrate or like athletic greens, for example, just to give a bit of like that boost on a trip where I might feel like I may be catching a cold. I found especially on like double header trips where there is a ton of flying involved. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, if you enjoyed it, make sure you go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one.